Do you ever get that strange urge to sit in the void and contemplate every poor decision you've ever made? Huh. Well, if not, then this video is not for you, unless you eat food. This video is for people who eat food or like to sit in the void, so if you're one of those two people, smash like, subscribe, because we have that in common. Now in this video, I'm going to be showing you one of the simplest methods to make an infinity room in survival Minecraft. For those of you that don't know what an infinity room is, it's basically this empty space that I'm in. It would appear that the room goes on forever in every direction, but that's just an illusion, and I'm going to show you the easiest way to make it. The first thing you'll need to do is locate an ocean biome. You'll need enough open water to fill out an entire zoom level zero map without catching any land in it. Inside of this chest is everything you'll need to make an infinity map. The building blocks aren't necessary, but I find it helpful to outline the map area. I went on a boating trip with my dad once, and he asked me if I could start rowing. I told him, I don't know, canoe? I'd say I got the last laugh, but he orphaned me on an island that day, and I haven't seen him since. And once you're far enough away from shore to abandon a child of your own, go ahead and open your map and check out where you're at. It should be completely filled out with water. From here, just make your way to a corner so you're just over the map's boundary. At this point, I'd recommend outlining the map's boundaries with some building blocks. It's not required, but it makes it a lot easier to track what you're doing. And if you do choose to outline the map, make sure you build one block directly above the water. Putting the block in the water won't really help you out later on. I went ahead and outlined the entire map. One thing to note when outlining the map is to make sure that none of the blocks you place are visible from within the map boundaries. If any blocks are visible, it will ruin the illusion on the infinity map. Now the next thing to do is to fill in the entire outlined area with a solid platform, and the easiest and fastest way to do that is with lava buckets. You're going to want to space out the lava buckets every three blocks along the length of the border. I'm only going to be using eight lava buckets to fill out this entire thing if that shows you how little resources you actually need to make this happen. You could even do it with one lava bucket, it would just take you a bit longer. And once the lava's filled out as much as it can, go back and scoop it all up. If you space them properly, you'll be left with one block that sticks out further than the rest, and you're going to be placing your lava bucket on that block the next row. Now what this does is creates a good starting point for your next row, and makes it so the lava only flows away from you in a straight line. Now alternatively, you could choose not to use lava, and instead opt to place all of the blocks by yourself by hand. I, however, find this more boring than watching paint dry. It will also take you an insane amount of resources to fill out an entire 128 by 128 square. So instead of watching me place all of these blocks by hand, check out this epic lava time lapse. While working on that time lapse, I tried some Earl Grey. It wasn't really my cup of tea. The next thing we need to do is convert this map from all grey to all white. And the easiest way to turn the map white is with snow, and the fastest way to get snow is by using snowmen. So go ahead and pop yourself down several snowmen and get your leads ready. Now if you don't have leads, you could just stand around AFK and let the snowmen wander around until the area is filled out. However, it is a lot faster with leads to just drag them around. The only thing left to do is to turn this into a winter wonderland. And the best way to do that is with a bird's eye view mini time lapse. And once you've filled out the entire platform with snow, your map will look something like mine. Your map should now be completely white. If it's not completely white, then it won't give you the desired effect. Now as much fun as I've had, dragging these guys around for the last 10 minutes, I no longer have any use for them. You might be thinking that I just murdered several snowmen. I prefer to think of it as creating a few more orphans. At this point, it's just about duplicating your map, but the first thing you're going to want to do with your map is lock it so that any changes that happen to the map area won't actually affect the map itself. Now to do this, you'll need a cartography table and a glass pane. Simply add the glass pane to the map and it effectively locks the map. Locking the map means that any changes that happen in-game to the area won't actually affect the map. And make sure you lock the map before you begin duplicating the map. To duplicate the map, simply add empty maps to the cartography table with the map you want to duplicate. Duplicating an already locked map creates locked versions of the duplicated map. This will save you some glass panes in not needing to lock the new maps, but will also help assure that you do have only locked versions of the map and your infinity room doesn't get messed up later on. Up next is creating the space that you want to create your infinity room inside of. Try to create the entire shell to the room out of glowstone if you can. This will help with keeping uniform lighting within the room and that's crucial to getting the effect. 
I'll also show you what a room looks like when it's not made out of glowstone, and you can see what the difference is. Once you've got your space set up for your infinity room, head inside and start placing item frames everywhere. Cover the floors, the walls, and the ceilings. You're going to need to cover every square inch of this room. And for those of you that live in pretty much any other country in the world, convert that to square meters. It'll make sense then. In order to get in and out of the room, you will have to add a door. Luckily, you can place item frames on the back of doors, and they won't break when you open the door. And this allows you to get into and out of your infinity room without breaking any of the item frames or the walls. From here, it's simple. Just start filling out all of the item frames with the white map that you made duplicates of. At this point, I've only filled out half the room, and it's already creating a really crazy effect. As soon as I step past the boundary into the infinity room portion, it would appear that I stepped into a white void that goes on for infinity in every direction. You can actually create some pretty cool special effects, where if you walk out and look into the non-infinity room, it looks like you're looking in from a different dimension. But nope, this is just vanilla Minecraft. Filling out the last few item frames, I'm officially surrounded by nothingness. Just like in real life. And just like in real life, this map is useless. I can't seem to find my way out. There's no escaping the void that is nothingness. Oh, just kidding. Found it. There are some really cool things you can do with monochrome maps. For example, now you see me, now you don't. Everyone knows that. That's basically the painting trick, but with a void. It looks cooler, though, because I'm surrounded by nothing. You can also do things like turning an everyday Minecraft house into an infinity room. This could be a lot of fun when messing with your friends. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like if you don't have proper lighting behind your maps. Here we have an entire wood structure with no glowstone at all, and this is what it looks like on the inside. As you can tell, there's a weird shadowed gradient as you go from map to map. It doesn't give you the infinity room effect, but it does give you some pretty cool wall options. There are a ton of options that you could do with this. I chose to set it up like an armory. I think the gradient is pretty cool, and it really makes the armor stand pop. And you don't necessarily need to have all the walls maps, you could also leave a door. Just knock out the item frames and use it like an everyday room. Now if you remember back, just before we made the entire map white, it was entirely gray. So I set up a room with the gray map as well, so you can see what that looks like. It gives you pretty much the same infinity room effect, but now it's a bit darker. Again, this will let you play with some of the gradients, and you can create some pretty cool map walls. Now personally, between the gray infinity room and the white infinity room, I prefer the white. But you can also do this with pretty much any color in the game if you create the map for it. Gray and white are the easiest colors to make, and everything else requires you to manually place every block. It's very easy to get lost inside of an infinity room, and the easiest way to find your way out is to hit F5 and walk face first into the wall until you find the door. And that's pretty much all the basics to making an infinity room, along with some other tips and tricks that you could try out to make something a bit more unique. Now the entire process of making an infinity room map took me less than an hour. It was about 25 minutes to pour all of the lava and create the stone platform, and then less than 10 minutes to drag the snowman around and make the map. Now granted, if you don't have a supply of maps or item frames, then it could take you a bit longer, but if you have those items, then it shouldn't take you more than an hour. For those of you that made it to the end of the video, I truly appreciate it and do hope you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, then please be sure to subscribe, I'm sure you'll enjoy my future content as well. Until next time, I'll just be here, staring off into the void. Bodie Boy signing off.